Hey, what is up nation? In this session, I'm going to be teaching you five SketchUp mistakes every beginner makes and how to avoid them. This first mistake is what I call sticky business. And basically it's not using groups and components. So a thing that can happen a lot of times is, is you'll start modeling and you'll forget because you're new to SketchUp that you need to be uh, separating groups and components for things that you don't want to be stuck together. Uh, so here I've exploded this so that it's all one shape and you can see if I want to move this design or something everything is attached to it. Or if I wanted to move these wings back a little um, and I go to select them, if I select this wing and I go to move it, everything gets stuck to it. So that's just one mistake. Uh, if you, if you want to correct this, it's a little bit tedious to go back and retroactively fix this. Uh, but you can see here, I do have this. Uh, let's also select these. I'm going to make it a group. So now when I move it, you can see that everything goes together and it's not stuck together. Now it requires a little bit of repair because uh, it's not a group or component. Um, or that's not how it was made and uh, and that'll help you get rid of your sticky business the second mistake a lot of beginners make is what I call overstocking from the 3d warehouse basically that's downloading a bunch of, of 3d models from the 3d warehouse and putting them into your model and I think that's a great thing but uh, I think a lot of people who are new to SketchUp tend to go overboard with that and you're not really a hundred percent sure of of what you're downloading um, when you do it. So I've uh, brought in this and you can see that uh, this pendant light has a huge box that the box should be much more confined. Um, and this is straight from the 3D warehouse. I haven't done anything to this. And when I turn on view hidden geometry, uh, you can see there's a bunch of extra stuff in here. There's like a, uh, looks like a sink that's over on the side. And this kind of information can really slow down your model because it's extra. It's not something that you um, anticipated for or necessarily want in your model, uh, but you're still loading it up and it's taking up space in your model. So if you're, if you're experiencing any kind of bug splats or anything, uh, it could be because you have a ton of models that you imported from the 3D warehouse and uh, they're not, uh, either their poly size is much greater than what you need uh, for what you're, you're doing in SketchUp, or they have a lot of these extra hidden things that you don't know about. So you can always come into these groups, like I just showed you, uh, go to Hidden Geometry and come in and like even in this thing, there's some extra stuff going on. Um, you can always come in and delete that information. I'm just gonna delete these things. So you can delete that stuff. And also if you just have too many um, components, what you can do is go to uh, Window, Model Info, and then there's a Statistics column. You can Purge Unused. That'll get rid of any components that aren't currently being used in your 3D model. The third thing I see a lot is uh, getting hung up on styles and the way things look as you're modeling. So here I'm using a sketchy style on the right hand side. You can see styles and I have uh, this text style pen selected. And I'm trying to zoom in and it just takes forever uh, to go in because uh, of the sketchy styles. So, uh, and you don't really need to do that when you're modeling. So uh, if you come down here and select, um, let's do assorted styles. You can see in the bottom right here, there's a little icon. Uh, that means that this is a, you can see it says right there, this is a fast modeling style. That means that uh, when you're working, you should probably be using these um, different styles. Save scenes as um, as your sketchy styles if you want to do renderings or you want to see what they look like with that style really quickly. But as you're working, try to make sure that you're using a faster style uh, and that'll make sure that your workflow is faster. One thing that I know that I really got hung up on when I first started modeling in SketchUp was modeling everything. And as I worked more professionally, I realized that uh, you don't really want to model everything because you don't have time to model everything and you're losing money the more that you model, uh, especially things that you, you're never going to see. 
So, you know, if you if you know that you're going to be doing one perspective uh, and if you have a client or your boss has a client, uh, you want to make sure that you're defining those parameters. Uh, I think a lot of people think, hey, you can do this in 3D and then I can have as many um, models as I want. And I think you want to build the model so that there's a skeleton there that you can build from. But um, things like um, if you look in this model and this is a awesome model and I'm not sure what they used it for but the kind of detail that went into this cabinetry if you're not going to see it um, from if you're not going to do like an interior rendering or anything like that um, it may not be worth it you know when I'm out here if I take a, a perspective from down low um, I'm not even going to see that cabinetry so is it important to have that kind of information um, and that's the kind of uh, things that you need to ask yourself as you're modeling um, is what's my view and what am I going to see? Um, you know, these palm trees have some extra um, stuff modeled in them. I think it's okay. This model isn't isn't massive. Um, but, you know, as you start to build in a background or if you want to build in a background, it could get pretty massive. Um, you know, these planks, I think, are modeled pretty well because they have the lines, uh, but they're not individual planks. So you're cutting out a face um, on this side that you don't necessarily need. Now, what I've done in the past is like, oh, I want a little space between all of these. And that may or may not be necessary. Um, or you may be able to just do that with a texture um, instead of actually having to model it. So um, as you go through and model in SketchUp, uh, you want to be asking yourself, well, what am I going to see? What's my final image going to look like? Uh, what am I using this for? Are you using it in plan? Are you using it for sections? Are you using it for perspectives? Are you using it for all three? Then maybe you need to have more detail. Um, so just ask yourself those questions. And where, where you don't need to model, don't model. Um, don't go into heavy details modeling things like, uh, smoke detectors. Um, you know, if you have those and you can throw it in and it's relatively low poly, that's fine. But the more that you add to your to your model, uh, especially if it's not adding any information, uh, it's detracting from, uh, from your time and, and your work and you could be doing more, th uh, useful things with your time. The last thing that I want to talk about is using too many tools. So you can see here, I have a ton of different plugins that I'm using. And I don't use a lot of them, but what can happen when you have uh, a lot of plugins, especially if you're not using some, is that they can start to conflict. Uh, when I was having issues with V-Ray, they were pretty much saying, hey, don't use this plugin, don't use that plugin, don't use this plugin. Uh, it sucks that that happens, uh, but um, when you have a bunch of third parties making uh, or essentially altering code or adding their own code to the software, uh, there are obviously conflicts that can occur. So um, I would say minimize the amount of plugins that you can use. Uh, up here I have a thousand and one uh, bit tools uh, and there's a lot of stuff in here that I would never use uh, like a door frame. Um, I would make my own door frame uh, because I would probably be more architectural uh, and I'd have the door included uh, in that. So like it's sort of limited in what you can do with some of these things. Um, but you know, like a chamfer tool, awesome. Like that's really basic. I wish they had that in SketchUp, but they don't. So, um, I use 101 bit tools so that I can get that easily. Um, you know, it's, it's super simple. I think the, the more simple and fundamental the tools are, I think the better, um, that you're using. Don't use, uh, tools or plugins as a crutch for uh, your lack of experience modeling. Um, and if you want to do like fancy steps or something, um, use a component, build a component, do it once, and then use that over and over and over in your projects. Uh, and then the second part of this is what I've seen a lot is that people don't, um, learn a software, uh, fully. Um, and instead they, they do one thing in this program and then they try to transfer it to a new program and then transfer that to another program. And I think the more that you can stay in one program, the better. Um, so like 
uh, SketchUp has layout, uh, or SketchUp Pro has layout, and um, I think that's good to learn how to use those tools uh, before you start going into Photoshop or Illustrator or uh, taking your uh, model out to a third party to do renderings uh, because you don't like the way that it looks in V-Ray in SketchUp or whatever. Um, because that stuff creates problems, and and I've run into that. Um, just the way that things convert uh, sometimes is problematic. So uh, the more that you can stay in one program, commit to that program, learn as much as you can about it, and then, um, and I guess for this that means SketchUp, learn all you can about SketchUp, and then move from there. Hopefully this helped. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And as always, happy hacking. All right, designers, just because this episode of Designer Hacks is over doesn't mean we're leaving you out in the cold. Tony's got tons of great content available at designerhacks.com. So join Design Nation right now, and we'll see you on the next episode of Designer Hacks.